Hi everybody, this is Jim Aiken. In this uh, series of columns for Synth and Software, which will include some videos, as you can probably tell, I'm going to show how to create various kinds of sounds using synthesizers. Uh, to demonstrate the ideas and techniques, I will be using the VCV Rack software, which you can see on your screen. There are certainly lots of other great instruments available in software, but VCV has some advantages when it comes to looking at how synthesizers work their magic. It's free, it's cross-platform, and it's visually oriented, so it's not too hard to see what's going on. Also, it's very powerful. So powerful, in fact, that you may want to keep using it in the future, even after you've gone through these columns. In the text part of this month's column, I've explained how to download and set up VCV Rack. There's also a link for downloading the VCV patch that you're looking at right now. In the next video, we'll dig into this patch and see how it works. In the first video, though, I'm going to show how to use VC Rack itself. If you've already been playing around with the software and feel comfortable, you may as well skip this video and go on to the next one. If you're brand new to software-based modular synthesis, you may appreciate a quick tour. What we're looking at here is a collection of 12 separate modules. You can click in the blank area of any module and drag it around. Like that. Or like this. I suggest that for now you leave the configuration the way it is because toward the end of this tutorial we'll be taking a step that requires a certain layout. By itself, a module does exactly nothing. In order to help make sounds, it has to be connected to other modules. Just about every module has input jacks, output jacks, or both. There are a couple of isolated exceptions to almost everything I'm telling you, but they're not important at the moment. Various developers use slightly different graphic designs for their jacks, but you can rely on the jacks being small and round. Here's a jack, for example, on this module, and we could connect it to that if we wanted to. I don't want to, but that's the way it works. To connect an output to an input or vice versa, just click on a jack and drag the mouse over to the other jack. This creates a graphic patch cord. The patch cord is really only a metaphor or a symbol. Signals don't actually travel along it, but for practical purposes, we can imagine that they do. Signals travel from the output jack to the input jack using a patch cord, like that. If you're not sure which are the outputs and which are the inputs, don't worry about it. VCV won't let you attach one output to another output or one input to another input. Watch what happens when I try. It won't connect there because that's another output and the cord just won't cooperate. You could make this mistake on a hardware modular synth using a physical patch cord, but in VCV, once you've grabbed a jack to create a patch cord, if it won't snap into place on the jack where you want the other end to go, that's because you're trying to connect an output to an output or an input to an input. Now, you can attach as many patch cords as you like to an output. To stack a second or third cord on top of the first one, what you do is you control click on the output jack and then start dragging. For example, here I'm going to connect this output to this input. Now I want to connect this to somewhere else. So you can't see my finger on the control key, but there it is. And now I've connected it to there. The other way to do it is if you already have a connection to an output jack, just start with the input jack and drag back to the output. That will also create a connection. If you want to send two or more signals to an input, you'll need to combine them using a mixer module because you can't stack inputs. In general, there are a couple of exceptions, as usual. It doesn't matter where modules are positioned in relation to one another. No matter where the modules are in the rack, the signals will travel from one module to another along the patch cords. Simple and obvious. 
Now, in addition to the input and output jacks, most modules have knobs, buttons, switches, and displays in some combination. For example, here's a knob. To turn a knob, you click on it and drag the mouse up or down. You can see the knob moving there, and you can see that the display is telling us what we've done with it. All right, we'll put it back where it belongs. To return a knob to its d default value, what you do is you double-click on it. Clickety-click, there you go. If you right-click on a knob, you'll see its current numerical value, which in this case is, what does that say, 1? Yeah. And this one says, I can't read it on the screen, probably 128. Um, you'll see its current numerical value if you right-click on a knob, and you can edit this number by typing and then hitting return. Now, if you right-click on a blank part of a module's panel, you'll see the menu of commands for that module, like this. Some modules have special commands that are available only in the right-click menu, and you can see some of those down here. Other modules don't. If you right-click on the ADSR here, all you see is the default stuff. Now, the most important module in any patch is the audio output module. This is usually going to be this Audio 8 module over here which you can see there. It, to set it so that it sends signals to your audio hardware, you click in the top field to choose the type of device that you want. And having chosen, in this case, direct sound, because ASIO won't record to my video recording software, then you would click in the middle field to choose a specific output or input or both. And these are the output jacks that go... Um, to your device, and these are the input jacks that come back from a microphone or guitar or whatever you have. Now, when you right-click in a blank area of the rack, you'll open the module browser, and it's going to be too big for you to see all of it on the video, but boom, there we go. It's huge because I have a lot of modules. You can search for a module by name or by the type of module you want by entering a word in the search field in the upper left corner, or you can choose a developer in the upper list or a module category in the lower list. Then click on a module and drag it into your patch. Let's see what happens when I drag a module into my patch. We'll choose something simple. I click and hold on it, and then there it is. Now, I don't like that, so I'm going to press the delete key, and it's gone. To get rid of a module, you can right-click on it and select delete, or simply hover the mouse over it, and press the backspace or delete key on your computer keyboard. If you accidentally delete the wrong module, just press Control z as usual, to undo the action. One more thing before we get started. Patches are automatically saved in VCV Rack to an autosave file on your hard drive. Even if you neglect to save your patch, the next time you open VCV Rack, your most recent patch will be reloaded. Even so, it's a good idea to save your creative work and then back up your patches by drag copying them to another physical drive. So that's the introductory video. In the next video, we'll poke around in this uh, bizarre looking patch and look at what it does.